nothing thing stuck. Okay, record though. We can start anytime now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hello there. We are uh, from the uh, COVID economy. Today we're gonna stop, 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 stop. Stop the fucking shit right here. This one. <cười> ok, đầu tiên nhé, mày sẽ giới thiệu về kiểu, uh, tiên mày sẽ giới thiệu về nhóm của mình Xong mà mình là đi đến từ kiểu uh, khoa nào, trường nào ấy Và đây là video phỏng vấn cho cái bộ môn nào Nhá, sau đấy mình mình sẽ nói về cái topic ở giới thiệu về uh, từng thành phần, từng thành phần một Ta thấy mày, ta thấy mày nói kiểu um, không ngờ luôn lắm Ok, thế là làm lại nào làm lại, cố gắng làm cho nó xuân sẻ được mà. Hello there, uh, we are from the COVID economy, a student project run by um, the students of the Faculty of International Studies from Hanoi University. And today we're going to have an interview with a very uh, a brilliant specialist from the uh, the University of Economics in Ho Chi Minh City. Hi there. Hi there. Okay, maybe we can start now. Uh, we'll have uh, my colleague, Mr. Tuan, here. Yeah, start with his questions. Okay, so uh, firstly, Mr. Kang Nguyen, can you introduce about yourself? Right. Uh, hello. Uh, my name is Nguyen. I'm a sophomore majoring in finance at the University of Economics, Ho Chi Minh City. So uh, I learned finance, but I do multiple projects regarding economic economics and international economic studies. So I believe uh, my key findings will be valuable to your project. Oh, okay. So thank you. Um, so can we start with a question today? Can we start the interview now? Yeah, I think we can start now. Okay, so for the first question, I would like to ask you about uh, what is, uh, what are the impact of the COVID-19 to the Vietnam economy? Right. Well, this would be a big, I would say it's a tremendous impact on the Vietnam economy since, well, it's, a, uh, it's called the international recession right now and uh, the whole world is entering the brand new economic recession accordingly to the economic uh, recession cycle like after, after the financial crisis of 08 to now is uh, 2020. So it's basically, you know, on schedule of the recession. Um, and specifically, Vietnam actually like of the only nations that see that saw a positive growth rate, although lower than 2019, but it's still positive compared with the um, like collectively low negative around internationally. Uh, specifically, the USA suffering from I would say more um, a decade low growth rate of GDP, of course. Uh, I would say the impact is huge, but we um, had, um, you know, like recovered like rapidly ra compared with our counterpart, other counterparts. Okay, so can you give me some example of some uh, particular sector in Vietnam that is heavily damaged or of in impact by the COVID-19? Well, okay, so heavily damaged, I would say negative damage uh, first. Um, it's clear that international borders are closed, were closed, and it's still closed now. And uh, um, the major, like, the industry that being impacted by this actions alone is the airline or aeronautics industry like Vietnam Airlines see, saw like a great drop in stock uh, indexes and others like its competitors like Vietjet Air or uh, Jetstar Pacific have record their um, like their financial statement their the uh, loss losses 
increase like by trillions of yen down and um, and we focus on others industry like logistical supply chains again international borders are closed both of, they cannot do outsourcing activities now and they have to you know like um, base up their revenue stream uh, internally or domestically by others like internal um, transportation I would say it's not enough to cover their like losses but I would say what that is one of their like key activities right now um, going to detail about the industry um, I would say the entertainment industry or the services industry industry is being suffered the most like hotel or uh, f and food and beverages all of those have to close due to the social distancing uh, policies of Vietnam but uh, I don't like those impacts were like kind of in the in the emergence of COVID-19 but now like Vietnam has has back to normal like not completely but uh like in a state that all of the other industry is rebound stage so i would say uh with, re with the exceptions of the uh, um aviation's industry other industry are growing strong um uh, in talking about growing strong we can see that um Hua Fat group or like um <coughs> okay Hua Fat group who is the like industry or manufacturer of steel major key player in Vietnam is seeing the his stock indexes increase like exponentially regard even faster than be, ever before the COVID-19 pandemic based, due to the increasing uh, demand for uh, road expansion and stuff so like we are basically entering a completely normal stage of economy and other industry are growing very strong Okay, that is a very impressive answer. Now, moving to the third question, I would like to ask about what is your opinion about Vietnam's government's response to mitigate the economic damage of COVID-19? Well, um, like seeing the like positive profile of Vietnam, I have to say that we have done exponentially well like better than others uh, governments um i would say is a uh, is a win for you know like the socialist regime where like actually controlling um the news and information flow is actually you know like uh have its uh impact we with comparison to like the us or other like you know democratic countries we are doing we are doing very well um and i would say the further like focuses on the government right now should be rebound like supporting the sme like small and medium enterprises since they are like the most impacted uh like categories of enterprises because they are small the they cannot like um recover from the losses basically they need stimulus stimulus packages vietnam alone has sent like trillions of um vietnam down for these industry for these kind of companies like to ensure that no one is being left behind and to ensure that um uh, they will not file for bankruptcy because most of the sme in vietnam are from are having like um you know like their own bio investment from other stakeholder like in equity investor from um korea or from singapore so if these kind of uh, companies are like facing their uh bankruptcy um the the credibility of the vietnamese government will be very low compared to with the investor or like uh, external stakeholder so I would say that the government should focus on like reviving or having these kind of businesses to survive COVID-19, the aftermath, of course. And um, going deeper into the uh, uh, like regional differences, like uh, it is clear that Vietnam is facing is um, the like the natural impacts of like the central flood, central regions floods, um, and we can see that like. COVID-19 is now not a major cases 
um, they are basically um, there is no regard to the previous policies like social distancing during the time of like flood or uh, natural disasters. So with the potential like this could actually have the potentiality for the re-emergence of uh, COVID-19. But I would say Vietnamese government should be like uh, heavily supervised its citizens or like the the you know like potential allergy of COVID-19 um, to like to ensure that there will be no re-emergence of the virus. Um, and um, going to like macroeconomic uh, policy, I say Vietnam have Vietnam state central Vietnam central bank have actually do a lot of um, monetary policy in order to like maximize the capital of Vietnam to support a lot of like industry, including relevant to like the set uh, services industry, the uh, um, um, agric agricultural or um, specifically agriculture. I want to bring the attention to agriculture since they uh, the Chinese um, like the Chinese, uh, you know, like, um, you know, like, sorry, I forgot the, the way to describe. OK, it's so like the Chinese who are the main demand of like the Vietnamese agricultural agricultural products, right? Uh, they decided to cut the trade with Vietnam due to like they need to close their borders. So a lot of farmers or from um, all the regions had to like solve their um, products in a like historically low prices. So the government needs to do something to support that. And now like they are facing another impact of the natural disaster in the center center. So like a lot of burdens are placed on them, although like agriculture is basically one of our key com like competitive edges of Vietnam. But now like it is being damaged the most during, uh, during COVID-19. So should should there be any focuses on that? I will say yes. Um, and um, going through like all of the textbook knowledge that we know like um, should there be any fiscal policy yes yeah, sure because like the central bank of vietnam is uh using a lot of is sending out a lot of like money to support they need to like um gaining the attentions from investor or other stakeholder in vietnam so the interest rate have been decreased have been increasing like very high like i go to the banks of vietnam and uh, banks on the street like today most of the bank have record their saving interest rate about seven percent like highest compared to the recession of 2008 um and other sector of vietnam are doing a lot like are in compliance with the government policies so i would say that is something should be raised um so with that being said like a lot of policies are in place. A lot of policies are in the making and will be uh, taken soon. And all of that will actually have certain impact, positive impact on the Vietnam economy. But we don't know what will happen. Like COVID-19's vaccine is in development right now and there are a lot of potentials of it being effective. And we may not know like how it will actually curve COVID-19. So we need to like prepare for um, the worst cases. Um, so the government of Vietnam actually do a lot of things that are preparing for the best, the worst case scenario. And I'm happy to say shout out to Vietnam, um, apparently. Okay. Yes, um, thank you for your answer. Uh, it was a very impressive one. So we are moving to the last question. What do you think are the threat and opportunities for Vietnam economy? during and after the pandemic? Well, it's kind of an easy one, right? Like, uh, the opportunities first. So like Vietnam, you know, like being the only positive in the, in the uh, Southeast Asian nations uh, in Asia, or probably like one of the fastest growing during COVID-19 in the world. So uh, apparently it will be like the attractor of a lot of, you know, FDI for direct investment from other stakeholders, uh, specifically the uh, the growing states of Korea or uh, Indonesia or Singapore, like the dragons of Asia, uh, China's support. And um, um, that is the opportunity. And during COVID-19, I have like read, read a lot of news regarding start of Vietnam gaining like 
um, trillions and sorry millions of dollars from uh, other equity investor from the US from a career so that is one thing like because of that we we show the um, um, the like the um, growth potential of Vietnam so like we attract a lot of um, investor to our country since they believe that that growth will be remained if they put their money into our country uh, furthermore, like mm, since the U.S. government actually regard Vietnam as a you know like growing supply chain and logistical partner of the world, they are basically uh, reallocating their factories to major provinces of Vietnam, like in um, Quan Ninh or in my city, Ho Chi Minh City. Like we having, uh, we are like seeing factories and a lot of news um, foreign direct. Uh, FDI companies, the FDI backed company in our like cities. That is a major thing. Like basically, there are a lot of resource allocate reallocations to major places of Vietnam. With um, China is losing its credibility, and Vietnam is actually benefiting benefiting from that. Um, and well, talking about threats, uh, I would say. Um, well, with the uh, aforementioned like investment and the reallocations of uh, international resources and logistical support, uh, I will say Vietnam is, um, you know, like human resources, uh, the one of the lowest in Asia, I would say after Pakistan and India. And um, they, this means that we basically just other nations are using Vietnam just a uh, like a a tax shield from the um, um, like for the cheap labor. That is one thing Vietnam is famous for cheap labor. China China's labor is basically costly right now. So that is one key thing. Like if we are being used up and we are being used, so this will not be sustainable. Um, corporate like using Vietnam as just because of the cheap labor will basically there is no obeying um, compliance with corporate social responsibility, which is something that we desperately need right now because Vietnam economic resources are being like used up. So that is another threat. And talking like talking about like uh, um, like COVID nineteen related aspect, um, I can talk, I cannot think of I can think of like many uh, because like. Um, something regarding to trade, um, there won't be because international community is supporting each other. Like the U.S. China trade war is on hold right now, so that is a thing. And focusing, so Vietnam is basically benefiting from that. And we're focusing on the uh, the RCEP, like the regional, um, another like agreements, the regional agreements without the existence of the U.S. is being being signed like in the fifth of November. So that is something that worth regarding. Like uh, basically, the international trade is being remain is being remained and upscaled to another level. Uh, that means that we will be uh, like in the center of attention. As in the center of tensions means a lot of like stakeholder will be like interested in investing in Vietnam or investing out of Vietnam to diverse their like sources to other um, places because of the free trade. Because of the you know like more liberal uh, tax system of the whole region, so that is one thing. Um, um, regarding to other like um, aspect, um, industry is growing strong. Like other threats would be like a lot of foreign company is entering the market, so with a relatively competitive prices. So how will domestic companies will compete with the foreign companies? Uh, I cannot say because uh, clearly the you know like the mindset of Vietnamese will probably focus on the uh, the external forces like the um, American uh, like the American goods or the uh, European goods. All of that is in place right now, and the domestic market is being suffered a lot from that. So it needs to be. Uh, taken into consider take taken into considerations by the government because uh, we not like foster the ex like other counterparts of Vietnam. We are fostering the inter the, the domestic 
uh, market as well. Don't like don't forget the core purpose of developing our economy. Just to like attract a lot of investment doesn't mean that we need to forget our core values in Vietnam. So again, all of these are just my my opinion on the uh, like the ex the macroeconomic situation of the COVID-19 or in 2020 specifically since like there are a lot of things regard trades and uh, um, you know like um, partnership or like industry related aspect in happening in Vietnam rather than like the COVID or the counter cyclical industry being happening in Vietnam so I would be um, more focused on trade and in industry rather than like economic uh, rather than COVID-19 um, aspect yeah very much for that extremely detailed and amazing answer. Anyways, I think that's the um, end of our interview. Uh, again, we would like to uh, give a special thanks for Mr. Kang Nguyen for uh, taking some time and helping us in this interview. Um, this video that we're compiling here will surely help with our website a lot. And if you want further information, uh, you can go to our website and look um, into the, the profile of Mr. Kang Nguyen. He has a very impressive profile, uh, I have to say. Uh, I think that's all. Anything else to add, Thon? Um, no, and uh, very thanks, Mr. Kang Nguyen, for having us today. So thank you. Thank you for having me. Okay. Hey. Okay. See you.